BBC Asian Network. Now, in recent days, MPs have backed plans to raise the legal age for marriage in England and Wales from 16 to 18. It will also crack down on arranged marriages, making it easier to prosecute parents in England and Wales and outside the UK who send their children to get married. Currently, it's only illegal to force a child into marriage using violence, threats or coercion. Earlier in the programme, we heard from child marriage survivor Farhana, who was married against her will. I felt really isolated, if I'm honest. When you're 16 and you're married, you're unprepared for married life or independent living, let alone becoming a mother. Um, So really my focus at, at that point was to just try and get myself to survive. Now joining me uh, to talk about this subject is Paisley Mamo, the child marriage survivor and ICRO campaigner, a women's rights organisation. Uh, Paisley, thanks for coming on the programme. Thank you so much for having me, Anchor. Hi. No, no, hi, pleasure. Uh, so, so your reaction, first of all, uh, when this new uh, bill was received in the last few days? Uh, I was speechless for a while, but um, absolutely ecstatic, as you can imagine, um, as someone who's been through the horrors of child uh, marriage um, and, you know, the devastating impact it's had on me and my life. I was very, very happy um, that this incredible step is being taken for the UK to challenge what has been affecting so many girls um, for so long. And I mean, it's a law that has been in place for over 100 years. So I was over the moon and, and still I'm so very happy about this. And like I mentioned, it's, it's a personal story for yourself as well. Um, you were mm-hmm. someone uh, who survived and, and your sister sadly lost her life in, in and I hate this term, this so-called honour killing. So it's a deeply personal experience for you and your family. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. So I was um, coerced into a marriage at the age of 16 here in London, and as was my sister at the age of 17. And as you mentioned uh, briefly, for my sister, tragically, uh, she lost her life um, in a so-called honour killing because she chose to actually leave the abusive child marriage. And it's really important that we highlight the devastating impacts. I mean, this is how far it can go for women and girls who are experiencing child marriage, because when they try to leave it can result in something so life-threatening so this is really life-changing what's what's happening here in the UK. Is this a risk that even with the law the issue could be forced underground? Um, I believe that the law is a very strong deterrent. Um, I think that we need laws in place as a backbone and a very clear law states to citizens that this is something that will not be tolerated. So in my opinion, just as we've seen with forced marriage or um, other legislation such as FGM, um, the law does act as a deterrent. But of course, it's not the only solution. So thereafter, once the law has changed, you do need to put in place, you know, training for professionals and start having these conversations with young people in schools and, you know, in sex and relationship conversations so that young people are aware that their rights are that they don't have to be in a child marriage and experience all the harms of it. So in my opinion, honestly, I don't believe raising awareness on an issue like this and putting a clear law in place makes the issue go underground. I think actually it's a huge societal shift and it's very educational for so many people who have thought this is okay until now. And it's so important to have conversations like this across communities to raise awareness as well. What would you say directly Mm -hmm. to someone going through that experience? I would say first and foremost that um, it isn't your fault. You're going through this experience and you're certainly not alone. There are so many incredible people. I mean, I'm so lucky to work with the organization that I work with, ICRO, um, and the other co-chairs who are part of this campaign. We do so much work and we are here for you. So if you need support and you need um, advocacy um, and you're going through this, please do reach out. And I do really believe and hope that this law coming into place will protect so many girls who are at risk of child marriage now, especially just having gone through a pandemic. And we know that this issue will get worse if these clear laws aren't brought in as a result of the um, the pandemic. And just lastly as well, do we know when this law might come into force um, at all? Well, at this moment, so we've just passed one of our biggest hurdles, which is the second reading, um, but it now needs to go through the other two stages of the House of Commons and then uh, the four stages in the House of Lords. So, um, as I'm sure you may be aware, um, changing a law and putting this into into law is a lengthy process, but we are really hoping that it will happen at the earliest opportunity, because the great thing is we have got government back in, meaning that it will happen as soon as it is possible to, but it does need to go through all of those stages. So uh, it's great where we are. This is a brilliant, brilliant milestone.
Absolutely. And Paisley, thank you for coming on the program as well and talking about something which is obviously extremely personal and I think extremely useful for, for people across communities to listen to as well. Uh, that's that's ever so invaluable. So thanks so much for your time. That's Paisley uh, Mahmoud, uh, a child marriage survivor, an ICRO a campaigner, uh, a women's rights uh, organisation.